Welcome everybody. I wanted to describe a variant of the Farkash Lemma, and this is the variant that we'll use to prove the strong duality of linear programming. So Farkash's Lemma is when, tells you when does a system of linear equalities have a non-negative solution. Just because item one is when, uh, you know, this system of linear equalities, AX equals B, has a non-negative solution, x bigger than or equal to zero, right? So Farkas's lemma tells you when that happens. And when that doesn't happen, it tells you some useful things in item two. The variant we'll describe is when does a system of linear inequalities have a non-negative solution? So here's the variant. The system AX at most B, right? So that's our big change. We change from AX equals B to AX at most B has a non-negative solution X if and only if every non-negative vector Y in M dimensional space satisfying Y transpose A is non-negative in, in every entry also satisfies Y transpose B is non-negative. If someone can write down a nice geometric interpretation of this, I'd be, I'd be very happy. I'm sure there is one. I, I don't know the picture yet, though. To me, this is just a bunch of algebra. <laughs> okay, so this non-negative system of, sorry, the system of linear inequalities has a non-negative solution if and only if every vector y satisfying this condition necessarily satisfies this condition. All right, let's prove the variant using the original lemma. It's a pretty slick proof. We're going to form an augmented matrix, A bar. Remember, A is size M by N. So M rows and N columns. We're going to augment this with the identity matrix, the M by M identity matrix. And then we care about when AX at most B has a non-negative solution, right? That's what we're trying to understand in the variant. Well, that happens if and only if A bar X bar equals B has a non-negative solution. So you can, you know, from all the variables in X, X has N variables inside of it. I've added M more in X bar, right? X bar has M plus N, sorry, has N plus M variables in it. You can think of those extra M variables that I've added as sort of like being slack variables, right? Those are slack variables that allow me to turn this inequality into an equality. Using those additional slack variables, the slack variables are just the difference you know, between uh, the inequalities being satisfied. So now I have an equality, and so I can apply the standard Farkash lemma. All right, so I'm in, I'm in case one, right? this linear system of equalities has a non-negative solution. So by the standard Farkas lemma, this is if and only if. So since item one is satisfied, that means item two is not satisfied. So item two being not satisfied means every y with y transposed a bar non-negative satisfies that y transpose b is not negative. All right, so because one is satisfied, two is not satisfied, and two not being satisfied means that every y satisfying y transpose a bar is not negative satisfies y transpose b is also not negative.
Okay. And now I can reinterpret what Y transpose A bar being non-negative in every entry means. This just means exactly, well, first look at the portion coming from matrix A. Um, right, the portion coming from this block is telling me that Y transpose A is non-negative. And then the portion coming from this block is telling me that every entry in Y is non-negative. Okay. So I've now actually proven the conclusion that I want. Every non-negative Y, right? Every non-negative Y with Y transpose A being non-negative in every entry also satisfies that Y transpose B, this inner product is non-negative. Okay. So it's a, it's a cool trick. We're changing from the Farkas lemma for equality to the Farkas lemma for inequality. And we do so by taking our matrix, augmenting it with the identity, and then this system of linear inequalities turns into a, an augmented system of linear equalities with our sort of slack variables that we've added. Questions? Thanks. <laughs>